So here's what you've missed. Welcome back to Sand Hills Hay Farm. It's been a been a pretty eventful July, actually. Um, in a previous video on my first cutting of this year, I told you guys I had a uh, field that we were going to cut around July 4th, 10 acres. And we did just that. Um, cut that field on July 2nd, <clears throat> let it dry down on the 3rd and 4th, and bailed it on the 5th. And, and really didn't have a lot of issues from cutting and raking perspective. The field had been bush hogged earlier in the year for wildfire prevention and uh, just just happened upon it and was allowed to cut the hay on it. So there was some uh, old dead grass that had kind of clogged up underneath the bush hog. Um, so it, it laid there in the field and kind of matted down. So whenever I started cutting with a sickle bar, uh, especially the thick areas, I had issues with the sickle bar clogging up, so that was that was a bit of a nuisance. But everything else really performed well on the sickle bar. Um, then uh, we we raked the hay early morning of uh, July fifth. No issues. Uh, the new idea four hundred two performed flawlessly. Uh, did did a really good job. Put them in put them in nice wind rows for the square bellies. Roughly about say noon, we started square bell in that field, and and not a lot to speak of either, really. Uh, as we started, a couple shear bolts, uh, hay was really thick, and I broke a couple shear shear bolts, just not taking it easy enough as I was trying to get my rhythm down, and we got about 200 bales on the ground, and then it happened. Nodder frame to the Massey Ferguson 12 broke. Yes, that's right. The casting at the right nodder frame broke. Luckily, it didn't destroy anything else. It just broke the casting. So, needless to say, that stopped the hay building activities for the day. So, we went ahead, like I said, had about 200, 200 bells on the ground. And uh, got those all stacked up and covered up, tarped up. And then the search was on for the new Nodder. Uh, it's a it's a 1965, 1968 era hay baler, uh, but there's multiple models of the Nodder frame that will work. And the area of the country that I'm in really doesn't do a lot of small square bells. It's all big stuff, mainly round bells and, and, and large square bells. So it's pretty big equipment. So the parts availability is not great. Uh, most of the parts are on the East Coast. Just so happened, eBay comes to the rescue again and I found not only one, but two complete knotter sets in the same state that I'm in less than an hour and a half away for pickup only so I really lucked into that I came out with two complete knotters that one is in pristine condition I don't even know if it's seen a knot and it's got the original paint on it both knotters for 50 bucks so a horseshoe under my nose after the catastrophic failure of the Beller uh, so went and picked those up, got back, uh, got it installed, uh, took about a half a day to get it installed, uh, get it tuned in, and then I took it to the field that evening and still had some more minor adjustments I had to make. I did find out something on that knot or assembly that was specific to my baler. The little plunger arm on the knot or that allows the trip arm to trip and rotate around and reset off the spring had too much material. And the only reason I can say it had too much material on, on it for the, for the new knotter's perspective, don't get me wrong, it was designed that way, is when I pulled the old knotter off, I noticed that the previous owner had taken uh, a die grinder and, and ground off about an eighth of an inch. 
so there was a clearance issue there, it looks like, uh, from, from the spring to reset the trip arm. And so that's exactly what I did. I took the eighth off the new new nodder I installed. And wouldn't you know it, that fixed, fixed my nodding issues. Uh, because what I was getting, it was just eight foot long bells uh, because the nodder wouldn't reset. So anyway, fix that and then uh, so, you know, we're, we're about a week, week later after we initially cut and the hay laid there a little bit longer than I wanted to. Thankfully, we didn't have any moisture other than the morning dew, uh, which, which was not huge. Um, and we got the bells, remainder of the bells belled up, remainder of the hay belled up, ended up with about another 150, 200 bales. So we took about, the bell counter said 500 bales, but I had a lot of, uh, you know, trip arm issues and tuning and things of that nature so I, I probably lost anywhere from 50 to 75 on that so so that so the take ends up being 425 450 um, the bells I counted that I picked up after I bailed the second time around was was 175 bells uh, the, the crew I had picking up the bells prior to that didn't didn't actually count the bells we were rely, relying on the bell counter um, so you know bell counter shows 500 I believe we ended up with about 450 425 to 450 so needless to say you know eight eight acres were, was mowable uh it was a 10 acre farm there were some trees and things you had to kind of mow around so eight, eight acres was mowable uh so we're, we're looking about anywhere from 48 to 50 bales per acre so it, it was it was pretty good so that's what you missed uh, since since the last video, we're actually on the way right now to get a hay wagon running gear. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna build a hay wagon, and the reason we're gonna build a hay wagon is because those 420 450 bales were all hauled in this truck at about 30 bales at a time. So after a couple truckloads, that was enough of that. So we're running up north of my property here, about an hour. And we're gonna pick up this running gear. We take a look at it. If we like it, we're gonna buy it, bring it back to the house. Um, it looks really good on the pictures that I saw. We'll get all the rust cleaned up, uh, get it painted up. Uh, looks like it's a new Holland running gear. Got the lumber coming uh, here in a couple days, and then we'll get to get to building the hay wagon. So we're gonna build a 16 foot long, eight foot wide. Um, I'm going to put a six, two six bait beams on it and they're going to be laminated beams and then we'll put uh, two by ten by eight decking uh, flooring should have a good hay wagon it lasts us a long time especially for what we're, we're doing you know four or five hundred bales a year should be plenty adequate to haul with that hay wagon uh, so not, not concerned about a lot of you know structural issues or anything building is super Super duper, super duper heavy duty, and and I don't want it too heavy, so I can pull it with with the 40 44m. Um, don't want to work the tractor out anymore, and I have to. Beller does that enough uh, when I'm bailing in low gear. So anyway, uh, so look for that to come soon. Uh, videos on the building of the new hay wagon. So looking forward to that, and don't have to lug this truck around to pick up hay bales out of the field, especially when you have 425, 450 bales to pick up. That was quite the workout. Um, it was nice, but it, it wasn't so super hot that it didn't cause any issues or anything of that nature. It just took several days to get them out of the field uh, after coming off vacation and going back to work and, and normal life, right? So that's what we're going to do. That's where we're heading right now. So look forward to uh, to the videos and building the hay wagon and um, we'll show you that process and add another piece of equipment in addition to what we have already. So so we just picked up the wagon and the wagon running gear actually and it looks pretty good. The, the tires are dry rotted. We're pulling it down the road right now doing 60 miles per hour. It's a little wiggly in the back but uh, there's no weight on it so not shocked just hoping I don't destroy the hubs and the bearings and the uh, wheels but it's replaceable um, 
yeah, so it was a pretty good deal. Uh, everything looks pretty good on it. It's got some surface rust on it. We're going to take it back to the house and we'll get it all sanded down with a DA sander and hopefully get some paint on it today. And then, uh, like I said, I've got some wood coming uh, early next week and we'll get the deck put on it. But uh, yeah, I think, it, uh, I think it's going to work out okay. We'll get some video of it when we get it back to the house. Uh, so far, here's in all four tires, even though I've seen some rubber come off of one of the front tires. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, check back in with us in a little bit, and we'll get some uh, get some video of the running gear. So we just got the running gear back home, and uh, it's pretty much in one piece. We lost some tread on our tire. The tires were dry rotted, but they held air. So, gonna be good enough to build the frame on. I'm sorry, put the bed on. Um, yeah. Pretty happy with it. Just a quick walk around. It's just surface rust. at New Holland Red and Ag Yellow for the wheels but uh, yeah it looks pretty good so now the real work starts that was the easy part dragging it home so We'll do a quick walk around here. Got the paint on. Worked out pretty good actually. Not a whole lot of surface rust of sand. You saw some of that time lapse video. Got it all painted up, New Holland colors. Turned out actually really good. No damage, no bending. Tongue looks good. No one's dropped a tongue, bent the tongue. Just overall a good shape for a wagon. This is going to be a 16 by 8 wagon. And hopefully here in the next couple days we'll be able to put some uh, decking on it. Get it ready to go. But it turned out pretty good. So this is end of day one. We'll come back day two and put the beams on and then lay the flooring and then put the back uprights on as well. So stay tuned.
make sure you go out there like subscribe comment uh, let me know if you enjoy these videos it's kind of like to give a perspective of things that i like to do especially with hay and uh, keep keep people updated with what's going on on the hay farm so thanks a lot guys appreciate it we'll catch you next time